News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk, KGVO, AM 1290 and 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. 27 to be fired, dozens more to lose hours at the University of Montana. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. Here it is Monday, January 25th, 2016. Sky is cloudy. We have 27 degrees in Missoula right now. Our newscast, sponsored by Nissan and Hyundai of Missoula under new management, offering rebates, discounts, and 0% financing on a huge selection of inventory on Brooks near Southgate Mall. Our top story this morning, University of Montana President Royce Engstrom on Friday announced final numbers from the administration's efforts to reduce personnel and expenses to match its reduced enrollment. U of M Provost Perry Brown told me the actual number of people to be fired from their jobs. If we talk about people that have a permanent position at the University of Montana, there are 27 that are receiving layoff notices. There are a few others that are receiving a reduction in their full-time equivalent. Brown said students will see very few changes due to the staff and budget cuts. We're going to have actually more faculty members than we've had when we had the same number of students, say, in 2004. From between 2004, where this number of students was about the same as it is right now, we will have 30 more faculty members than we had in that year. Brown says the administration made their decisions with future budgets in mind. We're going to look uh, the students are not going to see much change at all. Uh, certainly the budget's going to be in balance. That's what we're working hard to do. And uh, I think we're going to be in a very strong position for, uh, for moving into FY17 and FY18. Brown said the total number of faculty FTE is greater than proposed, 58 versus 52. No current tenure or tenure track faculty members will see their positions eliminated. Authorities have not yet released the name of a 33-year-old Kalispell man who was killed in an avalanche over the weekend. The avalanche occurred Saturday at the Whitefish Mountain Range near Olney in Sweet Creek. NBC Montana reports because of extreme avalanche conditions and waning daylight, rescuers were unable to recover the man's body until yesterday. Avalanche officials said the avalanche was triggered by three snowmobilers. They say the second snowmobiler caused the avalanche. Two of the snowmobilers were buried. One of them was able to dig himself out and help locate the other using an avalanche transceiver. The Flathead County Sheriff's Office has ruled that the Kalispell police officers who shot a U.S. Army soldier were justified. The report ruled that Sergeant Chad Zimmerman and Officer Eric Brinton acted within Montana law and police department policy when they fired at 30-year-old Ryan Pengelly on January 12th. Pengelly was shot after pointing a rifle at the officers and refusing orders to put it down. He was struck four times and remains hospitalized. Last week, some Missoula news agencies ran headlines indicating the city of Missoula was considering, quote, a takeover, end quote, of eco-compost. Missoula Public Works Director John Wilson said that terminology was unfortunate. That was an unfortunate choice of words. We have a uh, service contract with eco-compost. Their, their facility is just next door to the wastewater treatment plant. And we have a contract with them that expires at the end of June. And, and what we're doing is we're just evaluating uh, the alternatives. We want to get the best long-term solution for the city. The exact terminology used in the contract drafted by the city and Helena engineering firm Anderson Montgomery asks the engineering firm to investigate, quote, city assumption and, quote, of eco-compost operations and license. Wilson was asked to explain what exactly was meant by that phrase. Anyone can interpret that how they wish, but that's, that's simply directing the engineer to gather the information and make recommendations so we can decide what to do. But, you know, we wouldn't go in and hostily take over eco-compost. It would be a negotiated agreement if we thought that was a goal that was good for the city. And if they wanted to negotiate, uh, then we would talk. Uh, if they didn't want to negotiate, you know, it's completely up to eco. Wilson said the complaints about odors from the facility were, quote, not a motivating factor, end quote, of the city's engineering contract request. A delegation of Montana lawmakers have made their pitch to Washington state legislators to save the coal-fired coal strip power plant, or at least give them time to plan for a partial shutdown. A bill before the Washington legislature would authorize Coal Strip's largest owner, Puget Sound Energy, to file a plan to decommission the two oldest units of the southeastern Montana plant. The timing of the shutdown will be included in the plan to be filed with the Washington Utilities and Transportation Commission in 2017. Coal Strip Units 3 and 4 would continue to operate. And in a related story, a federal judge says the U.S. Interior Department must reanalyze a 117 million ton expansion 
of a Montana coal mine after environmentalists sued over the project's potential climate change impacts. U.S. District Judge Susan Waters says federal officials have nine months to re-examine the proposal for the Spring Creek Rhine mine rather near the Wyoming border. Law enforcement scanners were ablaze with calls about an incident that took place at the at mile marker 113 on I-90 about 9.30 Friday morning. Highway Patrol Trooper Nicholas Navarro has details of what happened. I was attempting to locate a vehicle that was just driving really slow. And then while responding, we got a few more calls saying that the vehicle is now traveling the wrong way, traveling eastbound on the westbound lanes. After making contact, the vehicle eventually you know, took off from the 119 mile marker for a little slow pursuit entailed for a few miles and we're eventually able to get it stopped. Navarro says stop sticks were used by the sheriff's office to prevent the vehicle from escaping. He basically had a loss of a few tires and he pulled over just before the truck exit and we were able to call him out of the car with commands and he came out and was taken into custody. There are some things inside the vehicle that may show us that there could be alcohol use but at this time that could be just basically speculation I guess at this point because I don't have any evidence that he would be under the influence of that. No injuries reported. The incident still under investigation. Missoula has seen two high-profile murder cases in recent days. Some citizens are wondering why the death penalty hasn't been invoked in either instance. County Attorney Kirsten Paps was on TalkBack and provided this information. There's a couple of reasons why these particular cases didn't qualify. Either that we show ambush or there was torture involved. They're really extremely egregious cases that would qualify and arguably neither of the two cases pending in Missoula County qualify but there's an even better reason than that. And the United States Supreme Court basically just shot down our statutory scheme for the death penalty. Papp says Montana's scheme was similar to that of a Florida case recently overturned by the Supreme Court because of their process for seeking and receiving the death penalty. If the death penalty is even going to continue in Montana, the legislature is probably going to have to overhaul the process. The jury has to decide. And our statutory scheme requires that a judge decide. And that's been held unconstitutional, and I'm grossly oversimplifying it, but it it just, at this point in Montana, I don't know that we're going to be able to do it until we get those laws straightened out. Papp said it's been many, many years since the death penalty uh, case was tried and and completed here in Montana, and carried out here in Montana. Our news talk time now, 612. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Low clouds and patchy freezing fog this morning will give way to mostly cloudy skies today. High temperatures will top out in the mid-30s. Tonight will drop back into the teens. Freezing fog early Tuesday, mix of sun and clouds by the afternoon. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for KECI 13.